Greetings class, Professor Steve here. Um, and we've come to the point in the uh, course where now we talk about really the direct ways that humans impact the ocean. And of course the ocean, um, other than finding beauty in it and 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 um, trying to understand its importance, its global importance, um, and all the... Uh, we, we generally really use the, the ocean as, as a resource. Um, now whether that be uh, for leisure or sport or for harvesting something that we need um, it's important for us to understand um, understand this and what the ramifications are for this for us to at least interact with the ocean and utilize those resources um, in a sustainable way um, so this lesson is essentially about the physical resources that we harvest from the ocean um, and first and foremost um, fossil fuels, um, or or as they're also known, hydrocarbons, are one of the biggest resources that we get from the ocean. It's considered a physical resource because it's something that's formed or deposited or is part of the ocean, uh, or in the ocean or is part of the ocean. It's something we physically remove. Um, at 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 first hearing that fuels, uh, that petroleum and fossil fuels are are um, our physical resource and not an energy resource. But energy would be a, a misnomer because we don't actually get the energy from the resource. Um, we take the the resource and we burn it to, to, to get the energy. The, we don't directly take energy by by removing this resource. We physically remove it. So um, the first one, we're all familiar with, with uh, the first two of these actually. The first one's petroleum. Second one, of course, natural gas. Um, the third big one is methane hydrates, and we'll go over all three of these really quickly, just so you understand um, where they come from, what they're what they're made of, and 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 how we use them, how do we um, how we harvest them from the ocean. Um, so essentially, the first two are in tandem; they're formed in tandem; they're harvested in tandem. Petroleum are is the thing that we refine to varying levels um, for fuels, whether it be the clean gasoline. Um, or diesel we put in our car, or the or the less refined stuff that we burn in our to to heat our houses or to run bigger bigger engines, um, and we do some of that same uh, combustion for energy with natural gases, <clears throat> but they're formed in tandem with each other, and essentially their source is decaying phytoplankton. Um, almost all petroleum and natural gas um, deposits were formed. Um, in are formed in marine sediments because they are the byproduct of decaying biomass and so what you need to picture is that millions of years ago we have this super highly productive time where phytoplankton are just blooming and blooming and blooming nonstop um, blooming so much that we have massive export of that organic matter that's formed from from all this primary production massive amounts of sinking and so as the organisms or uh, you know that are dead and dying layer the ocean in these huge thick mats um, there's in such large layers that they can't be they, they that organic matter can't be decomposed fast enough and then eventually that thick layer of organic matter is covered by new sedimentation you know the 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 um the the, the layers of bedrock and seafloor and 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 Earth's crust um, form in layers of different kinds of sedimentation of different kinds of rocks. So if you get a big load layer of of this organic matter that's essentially marine snow from from primary productivity, and then before that's ever decomposed or anything useful can be done with that, it's buried over by an impermeable um, type of sediment that eventually is covered over as well, and then this turns to rock, and it, these all turns to different layers of rock, and that organic matter gets trapped in a pocket. Um, so even that just can't happen anywhere. You just can't have a bunch of detrital organic matter rain down and and have it covered over and turned into turned into oil essentially an oil reserve. Um, but it has to be so it has to be trapped inside porous rock that is then covered over and trapped by impermeable rock. So permeable rock covered by impermeable rock. Let's look at this a little bit closer. 
So if you get a large layer of organic matter that rains down in the sea uh, through plate tectonics, a lot of the times it moves, the plate moves, and those sediment layers are moved so that they're under, on land, not necessarily out in the ocean. As a matter of fact, many of the oil reserves are on land. Um, often we have these large um, intrusions of salty rocks, something we call a salt dome. Um, but often it just requires being, or it always the requirement is that it gets buried over by an impermeable type of rock and one common one that, that this happens with is, is shale. So then layer after layer of sedimentation occurs and over time we have a breakdown of that organic matter. Now the organic matter when it's first deposited here um, begins begins de being decayed by bacteria but as I said there's so much of it that the bacteria could never decay at all but it begins the process and then is covered over and then over time that that organic matter begin continues to decay to a certain kind of, of of hydrocarbon. The organic matter becomes a it's still organic. Hydrocarbons are organic, um, and that hydrocarbon deter decays to petroleum. Then petroleum, if given enough time, decays to natural gas. And so what we get is um, essentially a layer of oil what we call a reservoir of oil trapped by impermeable rock we get um, um, a thick layer of heavier petroleum essentially with an air pocket at the top of it in this trapped area that's full of natural gas so when we drill down for these things we have to drill down um, into it, you know upstream in this reservoir and tap the natural gas and that's how humans collect the natural gas by going straight through it and then we need a separate um, uh, core to drill down and tap the reservoir of of um, of petroleum and so we collect both from the same place essentially now what's important to understand is that it's not um, a reservoir in the sense that it's a big lake of oil with 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 natural with a with an air with an air pocket full of natural gas it's actually rock it all turns to a permeable type of rock um, so picture it more like a very hard sponge that's porous and can and can suck up liquids so it's it's permeable rock like a sponge that's soaked up um, down deeper with the petroleum and soaked up top with the with the natural gas and we drill into it and collect it and there's all different kinds of rigs for drilling depending on um, what the environment is and offshore ones there's I don't know 50 different types something like that 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 are made to drill anywhere from very near shore to very very deep um, and I have a, a video this video is posted out on the main page there for you to watch um, it's a little it's very enlightening about oil rigs and drilling and um, essentially based around the Gulf spill that that occurred a, a few years back so the problem with us har harvesting the hydrocarbons is that our our demand is way higher than our than our supply. So these things are a fixed, basically finite um, resource. So they're a limited resource because they're not renewing. It's something that deposited millions of years ago and took millions of years to form, and we're harvesting it way faster than we can find it. And you just look at sort of the demand in quadrillion BTUs, which is a measurement of energy that we um, have you are using and, pro and the projections of what we will use in oil, natural gas. Coal is also um, still a, a very large um, hydrocarbon source that we use, but that's only harvested on land. Um, and the problem is that uh, as a, the globe consumes over um, 1,000 barrels of oil per second and uh, worldwide consumption in, in 2005 um, and this is just an example it was 32 ba billion barrels for the for the um, for the year and the problem was we only found 8 billion barrels worth of new oil reserves so we're using that up quite quickly so the third type of hydrocarbon is methane hydrate Okay, this is the third type of hydrocarbon that we can harvest as a resource from the ocean. And methane hydrate, and we also call it methane ice, because it's, it's actually a solid and it looks like ice, and we'll, um, I believe I have a picture of it in a minute, um, forms in much the same way, but under even more particular, it can form under shorter time scales, 
um, and uh, it sort of slow releases energy and can and can um, be this big deposit of energy that a community can grow up around um, that is uh, an awful lot like a like a deep sea vent community like a hydrothermal vent community and the thing is uh, it sort of forms the same way we have a big large layer of um, of organic matter that deposits and then it's partially buried and and begins to break down and is at the right temperature at the right depth and pressure um, and temperature um, for for methane to begin to form so anoxic bacteria begin to break it down and produce methane and if if the methane bubbles up into the right depth where there is um, the right um, essentially you need three three main environmental factors to be exactly right and that's temperature and uh, pressure and and um, and coverage with other seafloor sediments then it turns solid into, into what we call methane ice um, and so essentially um, the, the big thing about methane hydrates is it's really the largest global reservoir of hydrocarbons um, and and its energy the energy that you get from methane from methane hydrate or methane ice is worth much much more um, BTUs than is oil or natural gas and you can see how how big the reservoir of, of methane ice is compared to natural gas oil or even coal which is still our largest sort of reserves of fossil fuels on on the globe and you see they all occur basically on these continental margins where these exact conditions of of depth temperature and pressure um, meet the three three main things and so here I just re redrew out sort of the difference between um, in billions of tons we know of have already located and identified 3,000 billions tons of methane hydrate um, you know we have in the order of only 600 that we know of in coal and we're using that very rapidly only about 160 of oil and we're using that even faster and, and natural gases we, we know we know we we know of at the least amount um, the location of the least of, it, of this the least amount and so uh, this is a chunk of methane ice right here people holding methane ice and it's essentially instant energy you can light that solid methane um, and the, the reason that this is not widely known or or widely harvested and used as a as an alternate energy in a, in a grander sense is because it's costly it's very expensive to harvest it in this manner and it's also super dangerous so between the between the the, uh, the three different conditions that trap this in a solid state um, if it's harvested and those conditions are released in the wrong in the um, under the wrong conditions it can be explosive it can be quite dangerous to harvest and so one of the ways that that it's um, being tested to harvest is to actually turn the ice into gas while it's in place and just harvest the methane gas for energy instead of trying to bring the ice up um, uh, but this is still not a widely used thing and and to be honest with you I'm not really sure what the state of the research is on, on harvesting this as an energy source but I have another uh, another video posted for for the, the the cold seeps and methane ice so you can get a get a better idea of what I'm talking about Thanks for joining me. See you next lesson.